Determining a material balance on a partial condenser or some kind of flash separation unit in practice uh, is done often in computer programs such as Aspen using an iterative method. And if you're a chemical engineer, you should be able to understand how Aspen is determining the effluent conditions, compositions, uh, and mole ratios of your components. And so what I'm going to do in this video is go through how we can by hand determine given a certain temperature and pressure we are operating a partial condenser at, determine what the liquid flow rate as well as what the liquid composition will be. And so to do that, uh, we need to be specified a bare minimum of information. And in this case, we need to know our feed conditions, specifically the molar flow rate of each species present. In this case, we will be working with four species A, B, C, and D, and I've specified their molar flow rates in the table to the left. Uh, and we will also uh, need to look up the vapor liquid equilibrium conditions and the equilibrium constant K sub I for each species. And a note that I would like to make at this point is the fact that the VLE constant K sub I for each one of these species is dependent on the temperature and pressure at which we operate our partial condenser at. In other words, if you decreased the temperature significantly, these K sub I values would take on different values and um, we would need to redo this calculation, which is the reason why it is common that you're just gonna have a computer do this because it involves a lot of algebra and um, it will essentially guess values until you reach some kind of convergence. And so the first thing to do uh, when you're solving this problem by hand is to begin to make note of what this data tells us and what kind of equations we can begin to set up. And so the first equation that uh, we're going to make use of is the definition of the vapor liquid equilibrium constant K sub I, where species I is any of the species we're working with, A, B, C, or D. And that is defined to be the molar ratio of species I in the vapor phase, Y sub I, divided by the molar ratio of species I in the liquid phase, X sub I. So this is going to be uh, getting us some equations that we will use. The next set of equations that we are going to be using is a component mole balance, which tells us that the feed component molar flow rate of some species I must be equivalent to the vapor molar flow rate of that species I plus the liquid molar flow rate of that same species. And then we will also make use of a total, total molar flow rate um, balance, which tells us that the total moles in must be equivalent to the total moles leaving our system because it's just a separation unit. We're not actually reacting anything. So the number of moles will be conserved in this instance. And then also uh, we're going to note how if we sum up molar ratios, we should get unity. We should get one because uh, these are kind of percentages or relative ratios um, to the total number of moles. So we should always find that they would be equivalent to unity. And we can say the same for the vapor mole ratios. And so to um, begin the actual uh, hand calculation, what I'm going to do is keep these tables here and we're going to first analyze species A. And we know from this table that K sub A was defined to be 2000, which was equivalent to Y sub A over X sub A. And therefore we can say that Y sub A is equivalent to 2000 times X sub A. And what we will do next is we're going to look at the component mole balance of species A. We know that F sub A is equal to V sub A plus L sub A, and we see in, I'll call this table one, table two, in table one, we see that our species A has a molar flow rate of 100 mole per hour, and that is equivalent to the total vapor flow rate V 
times y sub a, the molar ratio of species A, plus the total liquid molar flow rate L times the molar ratio um, of A in the liquid X sub A. And so what I'm going to do is plug in Y sub A here, and we will find that we get 100 is equivalent to V times 2000 X sub A plus L times X sub A. Next, we will make use of our total mole balance equation, which tells us that the total moles in must be equivalent to what's leaving. In other words, F is equal to V minus L, I'm sorry, plus L. And if we simply sum up um, the total number of moles from this column, we would find that this is equivalent to 230 mole per hour. And therefore, what we can say is that V will be equivalent to 230 minus L. And so I'm going to plug in V into this equation, and we are seeing now how we are condensing down the number of unknowns that we have by falling back on our fundamental equations. And so to continue on with this uh, calculation, what we would see is that we have uh, 100 is equivalent to 23 or 230 minus L quantity times 2000 X sub A plus L times X sub A. And you will note how at this point, if we uh, combine like terms, uh, and uh, algebraically simplify, we will arrive at 460,000 times X sub A minus 2,000 times X sub A plus one, I'm sorry, 2,000 times L times X sub A plus one times L times X sub A and this can be further simplified to um, 460,000 X sub A minus 1,999 L X sub A. What we will find uh, once we solve for X sub A in this equation is that X sub A is equal to 100 divided by quantity 460,000 minus 1,999 times L. And so this is the Molar, we've been able to arrive at a function that tells us how X sub A depends on the liquid flow rate using our uh, five equations from up here. And so what you can do, because for the interest of time, is solve variables B, C, and D by hand. And I've already done this. And so if we uh, determine what we find for variable x sub b, we arrive at the following relationship between x sub b and l, and this is equivalent to 100 divided by 230,000, sorry, minus 999 times l, x sub c, is equivalent to 20 divided by 2.3 minus 0 0.99 times L. And X sub D is equal to 10 divided by 1.15 minus 0 0.995 times L. 
And uh, if you were interested in what the pattern is here, what we see is that x sub i is equivalent to the molar flow rate of component i in the feed divided by the total molar flow rate of the feed times that species vapor liquid equilibrium constant k sub i minus, sorry, the quantity one minus k sub i times the liquid flow rate L. So if you were writing some kind of MATLAB function, you were given a table, uh, you could very easily determine what uh, your equations are based on this generic or generalized um, equation here. And so the take home message from this though, is with the equations that we have arrived at, we have five unknowns, which were XA, XB, XC, XD, and the liquid flow rate L, but only four equations. And so what we need to do is use a fifth equation. And if we look back at the main five equations we have here, the equation we're now going to make use of tells us that the sum of x sub i must be equivalent to one. In other words, xa plus xb plus xc plus xd must be equal to one. And so what you do at this point is by hand, you will guess a value of L solve for all X sub i's find the sum of X sub i and then check if sum of X sub i is one or if it is approaching one and to give you an idea of your guessing what you know based on physical intuition is that your liquid flow rate must be an element between zero and 230. And this is because you're not generating moles, you're not consuming moles, and you will have a liquid effluent exiting your partial condenser. So guess L to be half of that, half of your feed. So 0.5 times F, which in this case was 115. And then you would solve for X sub I, and you would arrive at some X sub I value that's not gonna be equal to one. And then you would change um, your L value. Do you get a sum of X sub I that is closer to one. Uh, in other words, are you any warmer? And if you're not, then you need to change L and guess again. And uh, the precision that you wanna get to uh, is the main driver in all these calculations. And this is referred to as the iteration method. So what I did is I uh, plugged in these equations into MATLAB beforehand, and I had MATLAB uh, plot what values we get for the sum of x sub i's. And what MATLAB arrived at is that we reach a value of unity in the sum of our x sub i values around 2.32 moles per hour of our liquid flow rate. And so um, by hand, perhaps you would guess, and I know this is a very sensitive number because you can see the number of decimal places but you would keep guessing values until we get a value that's close to one. And you're essentially doing what a computer does, um, but much slower and more prone to errors. But if you are having an exam and you have to demonstrate your fundamental understanding of the material, 
you're going to have to do this by hand, um, but you can do this very easily and get and, and check your work in MATLAB as well. And you can verify that Aspen is uh, telling you accurate data. And also, once you know what L is, so with L, you can solve for all x sub i's because we conveniently solved for x sub i's as function of L. And so that will get you your molar composition as well as the total molar flow rate of your liquid stream using a material balance on a flash separation unit in which we had four species that we were interested in um, separating to some extent. And so uh, just to give maybe some more motivation behind this, we would perform these kinds of calculations and change pressures and temperatures of a flash separation unit in Aspen if we wanted to uh, dictate the purity of our product stream, for instance, or we wanted to check if we were getting good recovery or um, an, an, an adequate molar flow rate of your product. And so um, this is a overview of the by hand calculations that Aspen does in microseconds, um, but it is good to be able to understand how it works at the fundamental level so that you can repeat it and verify for yourself that uh, you're getting good data. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.